What's up guys, Swift here. Today I'm covering Justin Fields' former teammate and blue chip offensive tackle prospect, Paris Johnson Jr. He's a true blue chip tackle prospect that has everything you look for in the position. Honestly, if you were going into a lab and building the ultimate tackle prospect, he would look a lot like Paris Johnson. He was a top 10 recruit out of high school who is 6 foot 6, 310 pounds. He has a wingspan of over 85 inches with 36 plus inch arm length and 9.5 and inch hands. He played right guard in 2021 and left tackle in 2022. In roughly 700 pass block reps as a, in two years as a starter, he graded out with an above 80 PFF grade and only allowed two total sacks. He checks every single box you look for and has the frame to add more strength as well. That said, he's far from a finished product. His hand usage and technique need improvement, but those are coachable and come with development. As far as physical tools, he has them all. Paris has elite athleticism, an insane wingspan, elite first step quickness and burst. He excels in space and on the second level. He's one of the best reach blockers in the entire draft, making him a perfect fit for the Bears outside zone scheme. He is powerful and flexible with incredible agility and ability to mirror pass rushers. He is smart and has a high football IQ, but also shows power and nastiness in the run game. He fires out of his stance and never gives up on a play. He's also a leader on and off the field with the character that this front office looks for. Paris was a two-time high school All-American and a five-star recruit. He helped lead Ohio State to ranking as the best offensive line in the country. He won the Anthony Munoz Lineman of the Year Award and was a Rotary Lombardi Award finalist. Paris is an elite prospect in this draft class and sure to be on Ryan Pohl's list of blue chippers. I've watched his entire 2022 season on film and love what I saw. Let's get right into his strengths and weaknesses. First up are his strengths. Paris doesn't have an RAS score because he didn't run the 40 yard dash, but he looked elite in position drills and put up 29 reps on the bench press. His RAS score would easily be in the nines as he's one of the most athletic linemen in the class. He dominates in the phone booth and excels in 1v1 protections. He also has the IQ to recognize stunts and delayed blitzes, and he does well when passing rushers off to teammates. He has great foot speed and fluid hips which allow him to recover if beaten initially. He dominates speed rushers and neutralizes bull rushers. He's powerful and a pile mover in the run game also. He's agile enough to pull and dominate back seven defenders at the second level. He moves so well for a man his size, it's almost unfair. His ability to mirror and stay with pass rushers is so impressive. He is so violent with his hands while having such quick footwork, even if his technique isn't right, his combination of athleticism and power is incredible, and his biggest strength is how he can reset almost immediately if he gets beat by a move. While I will say his technique needs some work, his ability to use his length, power, and quick footwork to recover means he doesn't even give up pressures when he gets beat. That ability to recover is absolutely special. This helps him neutralize counter moves and recover from mistakes without being punished for it. He also fits our scheme perfectly with his movement skills paired with his ability to excel at reach blocks. He's versatile enough to play anywhere on the offensive line, but looks like a blue chip tackle prospect to me. He has violent hands and a powerful base. He's also able to help his teammates and loves to pancake defenders. Paris and Tevin on the right side of the line would be scary. How about his weaknesses? He needs continued development of his hand placement and pass blocking technique. At times he was able to dominate with just his physical tools. His agility and foot speed being so impressive covered up some holes in his pass blocking technique. He also occasionally gets lazy with his kick step out of his break and can be beat by speed rushers to the edge. Fortunately his wingspan and athleticism allowed him to make up for a lot of that. But in the NFL, he needs to refine that technique. 
Also, sometimes his foot speed is too fast at times, causing him to take too many steps and get out of position. He's also only played one year at tackle in college. If he moved to right tackle this year, it would be his third position in the last three years after playing right guard in 2021 and left tackle in 2022. That being said, I still think right tackle could be his home in Chicago. And then we're going to get to the critical factors. So for all the scouting reports I'm doing this season, I'm checking in on Ryan Pohl's three critical factors for each position. Honestly, Paris aces all three and makes a perfect fit for the Chicago Bears. Poles identifies the three critical factors for offensive tackles as number one is pass protection ability, number two is length, and number three is foot quickness. I've just talked about all three of those things when I was in his strengths, but these are Poles' critical factors. For the first one, we'll talk about his pass protection ability, which is off the charts. He's a stud pass protector with the ability to become elite if he can develop his technique. Then we get to length, which is probably Paris's best trait. Mentioned earlier, he has over 36 inch arms and a wingspan of over 85 inches. When comparing him to other guys like Skaronsky and Broder Jones and Darnell Wright and Anton Harrison, Paris's wingspan and arm length stand out. And then finally, it's foot quickness. Wow, Paris just hits all three of these critical factors out of the park. His foot quickness is purely elite and sometimes maybe even too quick. He will need to learn better technique in the NFL, but he has all the physical tools and will easily excite Ryan Poles and company. So then how does he fit in for the Bears? Would he play right tackle or left tackle? This one is intriguing. Paris Johnson Jr. has everything you look for in a blue chip left tackle prospect but it doesn't mean he needs to play on the left side in Chicago. The Bears have Braxton Jones, and yes, he was a fifth round pick last year, but I think he has the tools to be one of the best in the league. Look at what the Lions did with Panay Sewell. He's one of the best left tackle prospects in the last 10 years, and they've played him strictly on the right side. Someday he'll probably switch over to left, but they've just stuck him at right tackle and it's worked great. With Paris potentially being a top 10 pick, and Braxton being a guy who was drafted outside of the top 100, a lot of NFL talent evaluators have said it's a no-brainer if we draft Paris that Braxton should move to the right side. While I do think that's possible and will not rule it out, Braxton definitely could play right tackle as well. But considering we just had a rookie play left tackle, I would get Paris acquainted with the right side of the offensive line. Also, bringing him in at right tackle would not prevent him from sliding over to the left side if Braxton got hurt or regressed. Paris would be a great insurance policy at left tackle while also potentially being able to develop into one of the best right tackles in football. Either way works for me though. Bottom line is I think the Bears offensive line is a good right tackle away from being a very solid unit. Last season, we were not able to find five guys that could pass protect at an NFL level. Our run blocking was very good, but the team's pass blocking was embarrassing. I think the addition of Nate Davis paired with Braxton Jones' development and the combination of Cody Whitehair and Lucas Patrick at center instead of Musty means this line is heading in the right direction. There is still a major hole at right tackle, though. While it is possible that Poles plans on taking someone on day two, to compete with Larry Borum and Alex Leatherwood, I believe adding a blue chip talent like Paris Johnson Jr. would instantly make this offensive line formidable. If Ryan Poles took Paris in round one, I would leave day one of the NFL draft very happy. I've spent a ton of time thinking about positional value when it comes to this draft class. I love a lot of the defensive line talent in this draft, especially guys who will be on the board at number 9. But right now I believe the best path to the most successful draft is picking a tackle early and then shifting the focus to defense. The biggest reason for that is tackle is a premium position and will be on the field every single snap on offense. Even a truly great defensive lineman would not play more than 70% of the snaps for Eberflus. He always rotates. So spending a premium pick on a premium position that is also a huge need might just make too much sense at the end of the day. Paired with the fact that Paris is 
a former teammate of Justin's, and it's easy to understand why he's rumored to the Bears so often. It's hard to get a read on Ryan Poles right now. He's never made a first-round pick, but Paris Johnson has to be on his short list if you ask me. I would say right now on April 8th, as I record this video, Paris has to be considered a favorite to go at number 9 overall. What are the odds, though? That is anyone's guess. I would say less than 25% there's still a great chance that Poles could trade down again too. And then if he doesn't trade down, I would say there are at least seven or eight players that he would consider taking at number nine. In my opinion, Paris Johnson Jr. is definitely one of those guys. This is my second scouting report of the offseason. I did one on Tyree Wilson earlier, who's another player I consider one of Poles for sure blue chip prospects. I have more scouting reports coming. I'll be finishing up as many as I can over the next few weeks between now and the NFL Draft. I'm also starting to work on my NFL Draft special video. Currently, I'm hoping to have it done by April 20th to get it out a week before the NFL Draft. I also then will be live for the NFL Draft. If you are a content creator and are interested in being on the Draft special, you have to record with me in the next 7 or 8 days. Time is limited. I haven't even started yet, but I will be working on this video every day from now until the 20th. Stay tuned, guys. Please remember to hit that like button for me. Turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on future videos. And until next time, bear down. Swifty in the house!